Welcome to What's the Fluid. I'm your host, Tori, and this week we're taking a look at our recommendations for installing liquid cooling in the InWin 305. Now, our approach to liquid cooling in this case may be a bit abnormal compared to what you've seen done in 303s or 305s in the past, but through our testing, we found that this setup actually gets you the most bang for your buck when it comes to cooling performance. Let's get right into it. As usual, we're gonna start with the radiators. Now, InWin's marketing materials suggest that users should install a 360 millimeter radiator at the top, and if they want, an 120 millimeter radiator on the back. We found this setup to be problematic with the power supply airflow. Unlike most cases, the 305 only allows users to install the power supply in a single orientation, which means it has to intake air from the chassis. If you install a 360 millimeter radiator at the top, the PSU has to pull its air through the radiator, resulting in a hotter power supply. You could do this if you wanted, and unless you have multiple GPUs that are all overclocked and a power hungry CPU, you'll probably be okay. However, the PSU is arguably the single most important component when it comes to keeping your PC alive. Your PSU powers your entire system, and if it goes down, they generally go down with a vengeance, particularly if you opted for an off-brand one to save costs. The last thing we want to do is dump unnecessary heat into a component that has the capacity to take down the rest of your system with it if it dies. To avoid upsetting the heart that beats for our entire computer, we're going to instead opt for a 240mm radiator up top. This way, our PSU can pull slightly fresher, cooler air from the central chamber directly. Now we have quite a bit of flexibility here, and it really comes down to how long your PSU is. We're currently using an EK PE240 radiator, which is about 38 millimeters thick for reference. We were able to fit it inside of the top cage and mount our fans on the other side to get a bit more room to pull in air. If you need more room on the PSU side, you could definitely mount the 240 on the other side of the cage. Fortunately, InWin has cutouts that allow for the G and a quarter ports on the radiator to be facing in or out. For fan orientation, we actually tested both ways and found that our CPU and GPU temps were exactly identical regardless of which way the fans faced. However, again, our PSU is right next to this radiator. If your fans dump hot air out of the top radiator, it's going to make its way next door into the PSU that's pulling air from the same area. Our recommendation is to have the fans blowing air through the radiator and out through the hexagon vents on the back side. This gives our PSU a better chance to get fresher air so it can live a better life. And we all know a builder is only as happy as his or her power supply is. It's also important to note that our G and a quarter ports are facing away from the main chamber. If you're going with hard tubing, it may be easier on you if you face them towards the main chamber. Since we're mounting our radiator in the cage and our fans in the main chamber, we'll need to hold the radiator in position, place the first fan, and line up all the screw holes. We're using the 632nd screws that are included in all EK radiators. Start with doing a cross pattern for the two screws on the first fan, then do another cross pattern on the second fan. Once complete, screw in the remaining four screws and make sure they're all tight. Now if you're thinking, well, a 240 radiator isn't enough to properly cool my CPU and GPU, then you'd be right. This is where we start to break the rules a little bit. The bottom of this case does in fact support a 360 millimeter radiator, despite not being mentioned in any of InWin's marketing materials or the instruction manual. But keep in mind, you're going to be slightly limited on how many PCI slots you can make use of if you use it. If you're planning to build with two GPUs, then we would recommend that you choose a motherboard that has its 16X PCIe slots in the following positions. We'll once again be using a PE radiator, so the thickness is 38 millimeters. Though not something builders usually concern themselves with, we need to keep a special eye on the radiator's horizontal width in this step of our build. At 130 millimeters, EK's PE and XE radiators are a bit wider than most others on the market. However, their slimmer SE line of radiators are only 120 millimeters wide, the exact same as a standard 120 fan. Depending on which of the connectors you're using at the bottom of your motherboard, particularly for the 305's front panel headers, you'll need to be aware of this. The 130mm wide PE was a little tight for us, but manageable. Thankfully, InWin is using the smaller USB 3.0 internal connector. If you need more room, we would either suggest putting the fans between the case and the radiator, or using the SE 360 radiator from EK. If you're planning to use two GPUs, we would definitely recommend sticking with an SE360 radiator. 
We opted to have our fans blowing air into the case to have some sort of airflow blowing over our passive components like the motherboard and RAM. The best part about this scenario is it sets you up perfectly to mount your pump and reservoir. EK sells these nifty little adapters that allow you to mount your pump or pump res combo directly to a 120mm fan. Most importantly, this saves you from having to bring out any power tools to drill holes in your pristine case. For convenience, we've opted for the D5 pump res combo because Plexi is sexy, and so is having to buy less fittings. As an added bonus, we get to hide pretty much all of our cables that route from the main chamber to the back behind our pump res so we can pretend we tried to do cable management. If you decide to mimic our setup, we're going to mount the fans and pump res combo to the radiator outside before we install them in the case. Trust us on this one, it'll save you a bunch of time and pinched fingers. Our G and a quarter ports will be on the right side of the case, starting with the fan on the left and in the center, we'll screw them into the radiator in a cross pattern. Before we screw in the third fan, we need to mount our pump res to the adapter plate. All you need to do is screw in the four included screws to the back of the bracket, being sure to put a nylon washer between each one. Route your cables from the pump through the back of the adapter plate to keep it nice and tidy. We'll place the pump res combo and adapter plate on top of the third fan. The screws EK includes with their radiators are long enough to secure both the adapter plate and fan to the radiator with ease. Just make sure everything is tight to reduce vibrations from the pump as much as possible. Now that our pump res is installed on top of our radiator, this is the time to decide how you want to orient it. You can rotate the unit in its vibration dampening ring to achieve the optimal position. Once you've gotten it into position, tighten the two screws on the side of the dampening ring to secure it. When you're finished, it's time to install the whole unit into the case. At this point, you should have your motherboard, SSDs, and front panel connectors installed before even attempting to put the 360 radiator in. If you have a single GPU, then it's fine to install it beforehand, but if you have two, then you may need to install them afterwards. Flipping the case on its back, we unfortunately do need to remove the feet before proceeding at this point. If your motherboard has fan headers at the bottom of it, you should also make sure to install the fans and or pump before securing the 360 radiator to the case, as this will be way more difficult to accomplish if you try to do it afterwards. Be sure to use the short screws when securing the radiator to the case to avoid damaging your radiator. While Inwin does mention we could install a 120mm radiator on the back, we've opted not to. We need somewhere that doesn't have a radiator to exhaust all the hot air from the 360 radiator at the bottom. We're using four 90 degree adapters with 10 10 and 16 millimeter compression fittings in this build. You could do this build with a single 90 degree adapter. The tubing runs would just look different. If you're using hard tubing, you won't need any 90s. It's completely up to you. We prefer cleaner runs and we have a pretty low restriction loop, so we've opted for the 90s. A lot of builders will match all of their fittings, but we urge you to experiment like we have, using nickel 90s and black compression fittings for a nice splash of contrast. Small details like this can easily fool your friends into thinking you know what you're doing. Our first run will be going directly into the bottom radiator from the pump res. Now this is a bit of a tight run, but we don't recommend putting a 90 degree fitting at the pump outlet if you can avoid it. If you're using thin walled tubing, make sure it doesn't kink. The second run will be going from the bottom 360 to the back of the case and up to the top 240. Going into the 240, this is the one 90 degree fitting that we feel is an absolute must. The next run will go from the 240 back to the front into the CPU block. Now, we opted to leave the CPU block on its default orientation with the in on the left and the out being on the right because we wanted them curves. However, if you want slightly straighter runs, you monster, you could rotate the CPU block 180 degrees. Just make sure the run from the radiator is feeding into the in port. From there, we'll go into the GPU block from the top and back over to the pump res from the bottom. If you're using two GPUs, you may need to utilize one of EK's terminals in order to get the G and a quarter port coming out on the right, as you may not have the clearance to put the 90 degree fitting in like we did. And we're done. This build took less than two meters of tubing. If you're using EK's fittings and have opted to tighten them down using an eight millimeter Allen key, be sure to go easy on them. Remember that Plexi is very fragile and can crack easily. You don't need to tighten to the point where it won't tighten anymore, just enough so it feels secure, doesn't wiggle, and the O-ring compresses. Filling up this loop is the same as any other. Make sure only the pump is plugged into the PSU, fill the reservoir, run the pump, turn off when the reservoir empties, and repeat until coolant starts to flow back into the reservoir. 
In this build, we decided to use 100% pure Yeti blood for our coolant. Keeps things nice and icy. If you wanted to add a drain port, we would recommend adding your T-fitting to the run between your two radiators to try to tuck the drain in the back of the case somewhere. We had a lot of fun building in the Inwin 305 case. Let us know in the comments how you would have done the configuration and subscribe to the channel to see more reviews, builds, and tips. You'll definitely be seeing the 305 again as we liked it so much, we've actually decided to use it as one of our studio computers. Until next time, stay cool.